Chaos Culture, Culture Radio. Be back. You know we back in the house. Happy holiday. Merry Christmas. Hanukkah. Kwanzaa. And what's the other one? Um, um, Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. That's Shanika. One. That's the one. Now, this topic today is really touchy for the black community, especially Basically. the men. Like, yep. We asking, is it hard for a black man out here to survive? Yeah. Or that's something the social media made up, society made up, that it's really not that hard for black men. Mm-hmm. Now, that is very touchy because, you know, I experienced some things, but I'm going to let my partner here go first because that's oh what my I'm going to go in on you guys today. I could talk about a whole book of stuff that I've been through, and I, and I think a lot of guys can relate to what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm just, I, I think uh, a number of people could relate. I just think it's all a bit, it all depends on how people can perceive what I'm trying to say. Uh huh. So, we could start up. We could start off from this situation. I grew up in the hood. Yeah, I'm from Adapata, 35th Street, 1800 uh-huh. block. Shout out, AP. AP. So, um, now parents are immigrants. Uh huh. The ironic thing about this, um, we didn't grow up in the projects, but the but the ghetto mentality was infectious in the neighborhood. Okay. So I caught my first case at 20. Wow. Hanging with the wrong people. Now, a lot of people can say that that was on my own volition, but then you got to understand there's a deeper, there's a deeper situation that goes behind that from a socioeconomic situation. Uh huh. You know what I mean? If there's no opportunities around for a lot of young guys, a lot of young guys going to fall into these type of traps. Uh huh. And even after that, my whole life from there ha- has been hard for me to even get a good job. Wow, because that because that record is still on your back. One hundred percent. It's not only that, though. You also got to understand something. If this is a chessboard, who controls the chessboard? And they, they, you know, what I mean, you playing the game like that, so you got to play it from a certain perspective. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm just telling you about the criminal aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I could tell you about me being discriminate, being being discriminated from jobs. Yeah. I experienced that. You know what I mean? They, um, they look down on us. You know what I mean? I could tell you about managers who thought I was incompetent and said that I wasn't smart enough to get certain positions. And I used to get mad about those type of things. But like, oh, my God. Like, But then I also got to understand something. I didn't build this job. Wow. You know what I mean? The, the people who built the job, they built it for a certain reason. So if they didn't want me on there, I couldn't get mad about it. So from from... And we just talking about that, you know what I mean? We, this whole topic can go into different sectors of police brutality, um, economically, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, one out of three black men are in prison. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? A lot of us don't finish high school. You know, we can, you know, um, a lot of us are targeted in school. Let me tell you something. Uh-huh. I went to Comstart. You ever went to Comstart? No, uh, a couple of my friends there, yeah. No, I went to, I went to Comstart. I went to Kelsey L. Farr. Now, my mother don't speak English at this time. Uh-huh. I remember this vividly. Now, my mother don't speak English. I'm going to school. I'm not getting the homework. So they automatically say, oh, you're a special ed student. Wait. Listen really? now. Listen now. Wow, listen now. That's crazy. Listen I'm now. Listening. I'm, listening. I'm telling you about something that a lot of these kids go through. Uh-huh. So my mother comes to the school and she was like, she didn't understand what they was talking about. But of course, she's from the, yeah, the islands. The islands. All she knows is that, hey, go to school, get a good education, and don't worry about this. So now, as they labeled me a special ed student with me and a bunch of other ADOS cats. Mm. That had pigeonholed me for the somewhat the rest of my life until I got into college. Wow! So you always thought you yourself of being a sub- yeah a sub subhuman. Wow! You know, I didn't thought I was smart enough until my grades in college was better than it was in high school. That always happened. It happened to me in high school. I was like, a lot of people don't believe that. I told one of my coworkers at my job. I told him. In high school, I used to get D's and L's. And he was like, all the time. He was like, wait, you used to get D's and L's? I said, yeah, I barely graduated. And he was like. But he's like, you so educated now. I said, because I hang with the right people. You know, I educate myself. I start reading, doing research. You know, 
chilling with the Atlanta boys and, you know, Walter and, you know. Oh, doing definitely. What I do. And, he, of course, my brother. So, be fed into one another. You know what I mean? So. And, but, and that and that's what it's up. But, but here's the thing. If you was in a school system that was made for kids to win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because don't get me wrong. We can blame everything on the individuality and said that there was kids coming from broken homes there. You know what I'm trying to say? But we also got to remember, was the parents went to good schools or they was coming from broken homes? So there's a cycle that goes on. It is. But 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 the the, the but the mindset of black man, I remember I heard a guy told me that, but he, he told me his parents used to tell him, when you walk outside, please come home. As a child, getting that like, man, like, please come home. Because he knew that out there in these streets... He may not be coming back. Oh no, definitely. We lost a lot of people to this to to this thing called life. You know what I mean? As far as being a black man, living while black is a different situation. Not a not a lot of people are going to agree with it. Everybody have their own opinions, and I'm not going to negate that. Everybody, everybody, everybody journey is different. Uh huh. But what I experience is different. But you know, a lot of people come in and say, "Okay, black people are making excuses, especially the black man, because you say society don't accept you, so you still won't get up and work." Or you still want to get up and do what you gotta do? Yeah, I don't. I don't agree with them. I don't disagree with them either. They kind of make it a valid point because we do consider ourselves a victim. Do you agree with that? You you want to know some to to the to, to there's certain there's certain group of black men who mm-hmm. are playing victimology, mm-hmm. but not everybody. I, I agree. How long you know me? Like twenty years. Twenty years. Do I ever play victim? No. I'm the one with the felony. I'm the one with the felony. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, uh, like, my goal is to try to get a government party. Fact. You know what I mean? So I can be able to start my own financial company. But I'm just saying, me going through this such a situation, I never blatantly blame anybody. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't raised like that. Uh-huh. But the point of the fact is, I'm not stupid. I do see what things are, are against me. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean? it's just the same. It's just the same thing. I'm gonna just even throw something this at you too. Where you work at? Are there any black managers? Because <laughs> you know, I used to work where yeah, you work at yeah, too. Exactly. I, we ain't gonna say the name, but like probably like one percent. One percent. One percent. When I used to work there in the inception of that business, at that time there was not one black manager. Wow. We ain't gonna say the name now, but no, you know, no, no, because that know. that's nobody' business where you get your bread at. Exactly. You know what I mean? But but I'm I'm speaking from from that point of view. Like it is hard. So you see, do you th- so you still feel like the world still segregate? One hundred percent. I I still feel like everybody have their own way about going. It's business as usual. Mm-hmm. The only thing we can combat that, you know what I mean? We had a a wonderful episode yeah. featuring the. Featuring the analytic boys. Which people love. Oh, they love it so much. They love it so much. They were sharing it. They were like, man, it was like so heated. You know what I mean? They, because they, it's a touchy subject. It is. That and people don't touch upon. No, they don't. And they love the perspective that they gave and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but, but um, the way we can not make it hard for us is what I've been saying from that last episode, what we was attacking about. You know what I mean? To, to be able to start to build an infrastructure for ourselves to give a lot of these guys jobs. I agree. You know what I mean? I agree. You know what I mean? Cause let me tell you something. It's people who we know that's still in Adapata right now can't get a job. That's true. No, that's true. You know what I mean? I know some of these guys who are, are, are literally four, five time convicted felons. So no, the, the dog, the job not even long enough. They no, no, no. You, you, you bet, you, you're barely lucky to get on Win Dixie Warehouse. Shh. But supposedly now they say they are working on helping the felons to to get them on work. No. You know they've been saying that for years. They've but, been saying that. Listen, you know, um, Governor DeSantis rolled back the law that's supposed to allow felons to vote. He changed it in a way where it's making it harder for them to vote now. Wait again? Yeah. But I thought we passed the law. No, that don't mean nothing. They can always add provisions on there. Mm. You know what I mean? You so could, they made it just even harder for the black man now. One hundred percent. So the thing about it is, it's like if we if we want to sit here and try to give advice to certain people and to give people perspective on saying what do you do, how do you combat that? What can they do? Become an entrepreneur. Get with a couple other guys that are struggling like y'all. Y'all build a team together. 
You know what I'm trying to say? Um, find creative ways to attack the system. I'm not, you know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? Partner up with certain guys. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, um, notice where you know it's not as your benefit, but try to, um, figure out how to go around that. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And not only, and not only that, but I learned the other day, the best way to start a business is how can you serve somebody? 100%. Or can you, and can you fix an existing problem? Correct. How can you fix it? You know what I mean? And, and, and somebody need, car need wash. Oh, you know, we got thousands of that, but you know what I mean? That thousands of that, and they still making money, but it's all about what's going to make you different from the next man. Exactly. I will never stop nobody from getting it because that's a hundred thousand dollar business. It is. Because the, the birds keep crapping. They crapping on my car, oh, so yeah. I can tell you what. But, but, so, but you know what I mean? But just imagine if you can have window tinting, um, headlight restoration. Facts. You could probably get it in. So there's ways to make business, so you don't have to be out here and play the victim of bleeding the Batman. We know, we understand, like, you know, the car oh, no. system and certain things in the world today is making it hard for us, man. Uh, Roni, when you already know the shit is against you, you try to find a way to fix it. It's just the same way if you got people who, in a certain area, they know they can't get no money. People are scared to move out to go get a better bag. Yeah. Facts. You know that? Yeah. You know what I mean? We know some people who's never even last past county line world, but steady talking about it's hard for you out here. Exactly. Go. There's a term by this guy named um Andrew Henderson. Go where you're best treated. Facts. Facts. You know what I mean? My goal is to get a bag, take care of my family, and move out the country. If. <laughs> It's, but you said move out the country. Yeah, I mean, you want to stay in the country. Nah, I'm gonna move out the country so I can so I can start smashing better women. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you said now you said pokey now before you're like oh no I ain't gonna talk about that now you finally talking. Yeah, I'm finally talking because I don't care anymore. <laughs> I don't care anymore. They're gonna have to get it how they live. You feel me? But you make a good point. Go where you treated at. If you're going to places that you know you ain't treated, leave and go someplace else. Go man. where you're best treated. Man, that's 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 part of manhood. Yeah, you go know. where you're treated best. Facts. You know what I mean? And, and that's the whole thing. And sometimes you can't look at your day job as a negative experience. It's all about what you do with your day job to take you to the next experience. You feel me? You gonna, Everybody's going to have to work for master. Yeah. It's all about how you go from there to build your own empire. Now that, you can, you can learn from the master. So you can be a better master, you see what I'm saying? A good master. No, you, you're right. I want to point something out. This is something that me and the analytic boys were talking about the other day, which okay. also plays in a part on why black men have a hard time functioning in society today, that it's not hard for black women. Uh -huh. You can have a group of black women start a business today. They know they know the, 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 the fundamentals of building a team. Uh -huh. But brothers, brothers in a sense, we're not, would not want to work with nobody because we all got that Jay-Z syndrome. Instead of being a partner, everybody want to be a boss. Facts. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like me personally, you jumped on here with me. I don't look at you as I'm your boss. You're my partner. Mm -hmm. Just like them. We Listen, we all own a piece of this equally. Facts. You know what I mean? If a lot of brothers would get like that, we could start tackling a lot of problems in our own community. The problem is ego. We have a strong ego. We don't want to prove, be wrong. We don't. We want to be right all the time, and that's the problem. That's something that I'm dealing with. That sometimes I'm gonna be wrong in certain areas. That way, you gotta have openness. No, one hundred percent. I used to deal with that too. Prayer, 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 and talking to brothers and Fact. trying to understand where they're coming from to see that hey, okay, you saying that I agree with what you're saying, and I'm and I'm I'm, I'm in line with align with what's that. Fact. This is what I'm believing. With. But here's the thing, though. Topics, ideology are so touchy, it's hard for anybody to get down to the nitty gritty. And we, if we're talking about black men alone, uh -huh. we're so splintered yeah. that it's That's hard true. to come to a common goal. Yeah. But other races, they don't have to like each other. But as long as they have an agenda that needs to be fixed, they'll go work. Yeah, they're working together and say, scratch that. I won't chill it at you at the bar. But just for this one moment, they just do what we gotta do and then we holler at each other. No, one hundred percent. But that's true though, but we our ego is so strong, we don't wanna learn from each other and that's the problem. That's the problem in our community. Man. We don't wanna learn from each other. So I'm just saying as far as as far as this topic goes, it is hard for us. It is. But 
to solve it is easy too. And marching in Kumbaya is not going to work for us. So how do they solve it? Because I know a lot of people going to say, how can I solve it? Creating, coming together as a collective. Um, creating your own ecosystem. Um, not, not, not thinking of combat, combating the, the system. Like trying to fight against the system not going to work. No. You got to work with it for your own benefit. See where the weaknesses is at. Point that out and cut that out and try to move on your own and be able to put your own situation and put your own spin on it. You know what I mean? That's what the that's what the main objective is on that. No, but you, you make a good point when you say the system. I was thinking about my job. They added a new system and they say trust the system. Yep. Whatever it mess up, go with the mess up. Go with the mess. Trust the process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the key. And I would tell my homeboy that I was like, yo, you know, Ken Dog. I was telling Ken Dog that I'm like, mm-hmm. that's the key. Trust the system, and if it mess up, then it mess up. No, definitely. Don't try to change it. Don't try to do whatever you got to do, but trust it to the fullest. 100%. That's all we can do is trust the system, and we've been doing that forever. But don't get me wrong. In 2019, we've been seeing a lot of different things popping up as far as people coming up with their own businesses. Yeah, a lot. A lot of people. A lot of people or a lot of women open up more businesses. Yeah, it's mostly what. That why we're not gonna touch on the subject, but it's mostly women that open up business than men. We slacking off in our job, man. We sleep. Sleep ain't the word. What? We playing the victim, bro. Sleep is not the word. Wow. But yeah, a lot of women now is making it kudos to them. A lot of black women too is owning businesses. No, definitely. And this is why we gotta start seeking brothers. Who are preaching a certain narrative that's going to take us? Like I know this guy named Doctor No Job. Mm-hmm. He preaches entrepreneurship for black men. He preaches being self sufficient. You know what I mean? He he preaches not having a poverty mindset. Right. If you want to get it, he doesn't mind you. He doesn't say hate the white man, point the white man. He doesn't say nothing about. It. He said, "What can you do to get yourself out of that situation?" Facts. Right. That's what he teaches me all the time. Facts. Right. You know what I mean? He said, hey, what are you going to do to get yourself out of that situation? Facts. He said, you still going to have to work with them, do business with them. But if you're going to try to create something as this, you know what I mean? My main goal is maybe for me and you is if we get something going, we're going to try to hire people. Facts. Because remember, there's people out here that's very creative, that's very unique. Mm -hmm. Get them involved in your team. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Stop being selfish and get them involved in your team. How the Patriots became the greatest because they got people involved. It's just not just Bill Belichick. It's the owner. It's Tom Brady. It's the whole team. The lineman, offensive lineman, is goes on the board. So if you get people in the team, you could be hell. You could win like eight rings. You feel me? Let me tell you something. You said something pivotal. Tom Brady would not be an MVP or of a Hall of Fame if it wasn't for the string of people that helped him along the way. Yeah, and he knows that. He take care of them too. He buying them car, jewelry, whatever you got to do to make and, sure. And, they and win. this is and this is what we got to do. Fact. Same thing, like you always. I always hear you talk about Kendall. You say, "Yeah, Kendall, that's my dog. You gonna get money with him." Fact. I've always heard you say that. Fact. Or we gonna do scripts. We are gonna put out movies. I'm like, okay, I see where you at as a person. Facts. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it by yourself. No. You only a goofy think he can do it by himself. There's no such thing as lone wolves. Well, some of our mindset, we feel like it is. <clears throat> no, no, definitely it isn't. Don't get me wrong. I used to think like that. I used to think I wanted to be a boss, have a couple dudes under me until I start learning. You can't do nothing by yourself. You can't. Even this stuff we're doing right here, if I didn't have you here, this this stuff wouldn't be done. Yeah. I, I, and I admit that. And, and listen, and, 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 I'm not going to even forget. And people, you know who do the heavy work behind the scenes for Chaos Culture Radio? Uh-huh. The analytic boys. Yep. Yeah. They doing the research. They doing what they got to oh, do. Oh no, yeah, they they they, they copy and splicing. They adding the tags on it. You know what I mean? I don't ever want nobody to think we do this stuff by ourselves. It's crazy. Just like we can't live by ourselves. There's an energy inside us that is given by God that we help us manifest. Facts. That's another subject to sell. Oh, that is another subject. People are like, oh man, what are you talking about? Oh. Man, you go to a whole different topic. That that that'd be too much for yeah, some folks, yeah. man. Yeah. They're about to turn it off. Oh, man. Man. So, man, it is what it is, man. But it is hard for the black man. But however, you can change the victim role and become an owner of the 
of what's going on inside Preach. your life. Take ownership. Change your environment. That's one thing God has given us man to do. You have the right to choose right and wrong. You make the choice. It's your decision. That's the only way things could go your way. You know what I mean? So, oh, wait, we still have time or what? No, How many? We, we, we already down to the last little minute. Oh, man, we always over time, man. But no yeah. worry, man. You know y'all going to check us out. But, hey, but they're going to ask, man, how can they check us out? Where should we go, man? You know, people be asking me. You got to let them know, man. Let me tell you something. If you wasn't here, I'd be losing my mind. Yeah. You are right about that. You could check us on Instagram, The Media Bums. Um, the website, The Media Bums. Patreon, The Media Bums. Mm. Cash App, all that. Donate. All in the description. Uh-huh. Support us so we can take this platform to another level. We're your number one premier Florida podcast. Facts. Not Miami. Florida. <laughs> we just, listen, we don't want just Miami. We want from here to Duval County Facts. and the Pensacola Facts. to the Panhandle. We want we want the brothers in prison to be able to listen to us. Facts. Because that's the only way you can change life. We thank Basically. you so much. We love you guys. Thank you for your support. People in India, Africa, Asia, all those people that are listening in every week. For real. Shout out to the Ganges Rivers. Fact. Shout out to the Berbers in, the Berbers Fact. in Algeria. If I messed it up, forgive me. You know I'm from America. Facts. We're out. One. Peace. Man, I just appreciate y'all just listening. Stay tuned for the next episode.